Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play with Xenosaga Part 2. Oh. Sorry about that. Cool. So, we picked up last off at the first save spot from the simulator, which um, we thought we learned about how to use eggs and all that, which you pretty much won't be using that much in the rest of the game. Everything looks to be in order. Time to progress farther in the game. Oh, where did this go? And you need this key. That will unlock you out to the outside. And the mission key will unlock you down to um the boss area. But for now, I want to check out this place. Just making sure that there's no items I'm leaving behind. I think this one gives you the same picture as perfect. Segment addresses are basically treasure chest items that gives you. Ooh. As I was saying, segment addresses give you um basically treasure chests. But in order to get them, you need to have the um decoders that go along with each segment address. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass. But I'll find every single one of them for you guys. <laughs> that did not do much, did it? These guys definitely don't like ether attacks, I can tell you that much. Because you're so limited on items and ether points, sometimes it's best just to not completely heal them all the way up to max if you have to, like just a couple hit points under it, because you really don't want to waste your ether points and stuff. Because also, by the way, you cannot save, or you cannot heal everything unless you have a very specific item in your inventory when you're at a save point, so you can't just automatically 
heal to max hit points when you go to every single safe spot, which, again, can be very frustrating, especially when you're trying to level grind. forgot about airborne enemies. There aren't that many of them, but when they do come up, they're a pain in the ass. As you can see, these guys are weak against ether attacks, so line attacks would ultimately be even the best choice even if you had to choose between one or the other. Ooh, that gives you a lot of ether points. Cosmos, let's go. That was weird. Never experienced that before. I don't, know, I don't know if I can kill that guy in one hit, but I do want the point bonus, so... I just need to hold out. for this boss already, I know I am. There isn't that much strategies or changings that we can do at this point, so this is going to be the first, I think, challenging boss fight that you'll encounter in the game. So without further ado, let's go and head on to fight our first actual boss. Here we go. What's going on? A brand new network is being created within the Cosmos mainframe. We've never had a reaction like this before. This is incredible. I've never seen the net grow so fast. Look at it, sir. Portions of the Encephalon map are evolving. I'm going to engage the target. Make sure you capture all the data. What? You cannot engage right now. You're tapped into Cosmos Perception. It's too unstable. Don't worry. We can pull it off. What do you mean, don't worry? Chief?
One great thing about the Xenosaga series is that it does have amazing music, but the only issue with that is that sometimes it's too loud for the cutscenes, and that to me was an example. And for Xenosaga 1, it's a little iffy like that, but I think the Xenosaga 1 is the only one where there was an actual issue that it didn't actually overpower the actual people talking. I think this guy was weak against Aether, I'm not... No! <laughs> Just kidding. If you can manage to kill, the, uh, to kill this enemy within a point boost, or in the point slot over there below, you will be in some major luck, and that will... Usually it's best to try to get that at the end of every boss, but you can't, obviously. In some of these games... In some of these battles... <laughs> yeah, you see the difference. preparing for pretty much a very strong attack. Now, if you aren't at a really high hit point level, I would recommend you heal like so. The cool part about Cosmos is that she has higher defense, so she can take the brunt of the damage much more than someone like Xion. Another hit, he'll be dead, so. Now that he has only 26 hit points left, I'm going to finish him off, get a point bonus, and we are good. Too, but that's good enough. So far, so good. Shift target to real mode. We'll test the Hilbert effect. What? Chief, you're supposed to follow the program. Cosmos, activate Hilbert. Roger. Activating Hilbert effect. I knew this would happen! Status! This is bad. Something's wrong in the encephalon. The whole thing could collapse at any moment. What? What about the Chief? Chief, you're in danger! Get out of there now! Hold on! Just a little longer! Chief! Nerve impulse is in the limbic system! We've got Kinley! That's enough! Shut it down! Pull her out of there now! Roger! Entering shutdown command! It's been rejected! The Chief's overriding us! We can't control it from here! What? Ten seconds to encephalon collapse! Sir! Damn it!
Chief? <sighs> Are you all right? Uh, yeah, thanks. Did I push my luck a little too far this time? <sighs> Alan? You can't keep doing this, Chief. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. Sorry about that, but I bet the data's really good. Besides... Huh? Was there something else? Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Well, we better get started on that data. Today's our deadline, so I'm sure they'll be asking for it soon. Attention, please. We are scheduled to gate out in approximately three minutes. All hands, please return to your designated areas immediately. Once again, attention, please. We are scheduled to gate out. All ships, gate out complete. Shifting main engine to stealth mode. Maintaining current speed until sector withdrawal. Exit from current space set at absolute time, 1300 on the 22nd. Seven hours, 16 minutes, and 30 seconds to withdrawal. Next UMN column in seven hours, 36 minutes. All gate jumps from other sectors will remain offline until then. So, we're almost home. Yes, sir. Our final gate jump is at the next column. We're almost there. We made it this far, we'll be fine. The odds of contact between columns is statistically low. Besides, this asteroid field we're in is perfect for hiding the fleet from them. Huh. So, Pollyanna thinks those asteroids are going to protect us. I... I'm sorry, sir. A bit testy today, aren't we, Commander? Huh? Is something wrong? No. Of course not. Ever since we picked up that object ten days ago, everyone's been a bit jumpy. And we still have a ways to go before we hit comm space. I can empathize with the Commander. Mm. Uh... Captain? Can you... Uh, debrief us on the current situation? Our original orders from the Galaxy Federation were to investigate the vanished planet and assist the researchers. But ever since we picked up that object, it feels like everything's changed. What exactly is that thing anyway? Who knows? I haven't heard a thing from the research team. But, as I mentioned before, apparently they're after the object too. That's unofficial info, of course. What about the rumor regarding the casualties during the retrieval process? Even if it were true, that's none of our business. The research team has their own orders to deal with. The only explicit instructions we've received state... 
that should any salvageable objects exist in the area, their retrieval takes top priority. Top priority? What does that mean? What it means is, over our very lives. Now, now, no need to scare them. Those orders merely reflect the importance of this operation to the Galaxy Federation government, that's all. Just stay sharp and be careful. That makes sense, sir. The entire fleet was renovated for this mission. Besides, if there's an emergency, we've got the trump card to fall back on. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, speaking of which, what's the latest on that situation? They're scheduled to turn in the A7 reports today. A7, eh? Only one step away from fully operational. It's about time, I suppose. Lieutenant, please ask Chief Uzuki to come to the bridge once her data's ready. Ask her to bring all the previous data as well. Yes, sir. What trump card? Was he referring to that battle android? That's right. You didn't know? Wow, so it's true. Hey, I heard that project's really behind schedule. You can't blame them. There were casualties during their last boot-up test two years ago. They're being more careful this time. It's hard to believe they're making an android in this day and age. The only place I've ever seen them is in old space novels. Well, Trump card or not, it's still an experiment. And it ain't like one android's gonna make that much of a difference. The whole project's just a chance for those Vector guys to show off. Someone's outdated hobby, that's all. I heard that even their commercial models differ greatly between those that have seen action and those that haven't. They say ignorance is bliss. Looks like they were right. Commander? I'm just envious, that's all. Sure. I'll be there in 30 minutes. They certainly didn't waste any time. See? I'm usually right about these things. Chief Uzuki, here's the data you requested. Will that be all? Thanks. This should be good enough. I'll take care of the rest. Um, Chief, do you have a second? Yes. The military is expecting actual field data for Cosmos. Is it right for us to keep giving them simulated data like this? Well, I must admit, you got me there. But honestly, if it were up to me, I'd keep her here, safe in her dream world, forever. But why are you so afraid to put her to real work when you push her so hard in the simulations? I can't wait to see Cosmos up and completely functional. Couldn't you at least try taking her up to Phase 3? That should be no problem for her by now. Phase 3 in a simulated battle config? Come on. We're not about to wake our little princess for that. Here's a summary of Cosmos' main equipment from the 2nd Division. This should help you with the guys upstairs. Thanks. I'm sure it will. Okay. 
so that's the beginning of Xenosaga for you, and that is our first area. Um. Okay. So basically, if you're a little bit confused on what just happened, I'm gonna save here. But, um. Basically, you have this giant android, Cosmos, which is the blue lady that you were fighting alongside with. And she's basically sent here, or she's basically created to defeat these big, creepy, gross monsters that you'll see later in the game called Gnosis. And Gnosis is basically what's terrorizing the human race and all that stuff. Now, this blue haired lady named Cosmos was um, first opened up two years ago, but they had issues with it, so they keep her in simulated data. Alright, see you later. Okay, good luck! Uh, <clears throat> well, back to work. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, it's just a battle android, and they've been giving simulated data because they're afraid for another casualty that happened two years ago. So, they're gonna give um, simulated data again, and everyone else is like, no, I want real data. That's pretty much all that there is right now. Okay, basically what this is saying is that this is a... You will get emails every now and then through in the game, which is represented by this bunny. And you can read all the new information that comes about, but mostly the emails basically tell you, for example, having new special tech attacks that you've been using, or being able to access new items. Or sometimes there's even just some people talking, well, like I know Miyuki, um, another important character in the game, pretty much just sends Chion some emails that don't really give anything else other than helpful tips. The one that we just read basically is explaining about the um, detonator, which is the destroyer button that you use when you press the square button. It's nothing really special, but what it does is trying to I guess give you the feel of simulated environment and how the characters actually get the equipment that they do. This isn't anything important. It's just like, oh, you can now destroy things with the X a square button. It's like, okay, yeah, cool. That is literally nothing important. Trust me, I would let you guys know what is important and what is not. Now we're heading off to the bridge. Oh. Over here, by the way, is also a map. That's very useful. Because I barely even...
She's really got you trained, hasn't she, sir? What? Train? What do you mean? Hey, what are you smiling at? Hurry up and get back to work. I'm on it. See how he always changes the subject? What was that, Togashi? Nothing at all, sir. You're just hearing things. I swear. Huh? What's up? Still not convinced? Oh, no. It's not that. It's just... I know how you feel. But you saw what happened just now. Even the chief is cautious sometimes. Besides... Oh, that's right. You just transferred in a month ago, right? I guess you couldn't have known. You mean the accident from two years ago? I've heard about it, but I don't know any details. Now the two of you can be alone. Why don't you ask her out while you're at it? We can handle the rest by ourselves. This is your big chance! I told you guys, it's not like that! I'm crying out loud. Anyway, I'd better get this to her. Good luck! Yeah. Go, Tiger! Jeez, they just don't know when to quit. It's not like I don't want to. I just can't. departments run like ours. still here, huh? Killing yourself over work won't get you very far. Oh. How are you? I had to get this data done before morning, so I... Well, what are you doing here so late, Kevin? You'd better get some sleep. We've got an early morning ahead. Here, this is for you. Thank you. To tell you the truth, I haven't been able to sleep lately. Something's been on my mind. On your mind? Tomorrow, she's finally going to wake up. I'm looking forward to seeing her come to life, but... I 
have no idea what to say to her when she wakes up. It's been bothering me. I'm just being weird, huh? Why don't you just say, good morning, Cosmos? Good, good morning? Well, that's what you say to someone when they wake up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. I think I can finally get some sleep now. Glad to help, sir. You should get some rest, too. All right. Well, good night. Good night. Yeah. Everybody's so eager to see her. Look out! Watch it, you slacker! Only authorized personnel are allowed up here. I've had three people vanish on me already. Get the hell out of here! My men will start slacking off if they see bimbos like you around. I'm so sorry. Who's the idiot that left civilians on this ship? What the hell are you staring at? Oh. Damn slacker! Okay. Again, lots of long scenes. So basically, a lot of that, especially with the guy with the cross on his face, mostly just symbolizes the um, Nietzschean evolution of society and how it has grown to this futuristic society, basically, to where there really isn't any spiritual or moral development, only scientific development, to where the point where you have people like the guy at the cross that can just pick on people and uh, enforce a slave morality and you'll see themes of a master slave morality a lot throughout this series now uh, another thing that's oh never mind
We'll get to that later. Don't act so surprised. Didn't you forget something important? You know, it's dangerous wandering around in a daze like that. Yeah. Sorry. I was just thinking about something. Are you alright? Huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm just not myself today. Alan, thanks for stepping in back there. Ah, uh, no. I, I should have spoken to the new guy earlier. So, you don't need to thank me. But, it would really help if you would try to understand their feelings more. I, I know everyone's still a little uneasy about Cosmos, but they've been pouring their hearts and souls into this project. They all want to see with their own eyes the end results of what they've been working so hard to complete. I feel the same way myself, you know? I know that. It's just that I... Chief. The incident, right? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I see. You're... Hmm? Sorry, that's not quite it. Forget about it. It's nothing. Let's just hurry up and get Cosmos completed, okay? Oh. Who could that be? More Realian maintenance? They really should stop calling you all the time. Technically, it's a violation of regulations for you to deal with other divisions. Besides, aren't they expecting you on the bridge? Oh, don't worry about it. I don't want to brush them off. Besides, it's on the way, and I've got some time. See ya. Oh. Ugh. I forgot to ask her out after work. Okay, anyways, sorry about that. Um... A lot of people have been wondering about why exactly she is wearing um, glasses in the year 4000. And just to clear that up right now for anyone who's wondering, um, Xion's glasses were actually a gift given to her by her ex-boyfriend, which you saw at the night shift earlier in the scenes. And... These glasses allow her to control her, basically, I guess disease, I think, disease or disorder, I think that they called it, which was allowing her to see into imaginary space. And using these glasses will allow her to basically control her sight into the imaginary space. However, um, she still takes it off when it ever becomes an inconvenience and stuff, so it's still more of just the character design. Like I said, there is a reason why exactly she is wearing her glasses and not just kind of like there. Well, it has already been plenty of time for us to end right now. Um. Okay, in the next um, episode, I will explain to you guys um, all the basic items and other stuff that we can get in here at this point. 
and we'll basically do, basically do a little bit of reconnoitering, either before we go and meet the Realians or after we go and meet the Realians. So, oh, and you also get to learn about the symbolic meaning behind Realians, or at least a little bit of the symbolic meanings behind Realians on the next episode. So, make sure to go in and stay tuned. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been Contradicting the Guide. Make sure to check Operations Zeno's Facebook page. Good night.